Hello, my name's Martin, and in this video we'll be going through the Sculpt Pies add-on. You can download this on my Gumroad here. Installation instructions are on the listing. This is just a quick overview of how the custom Sculpt Pies work that I use. Um, it's because they appear in all of the videos I'm creating. So rather than explain them at the start of, of each video, uh, I can refer to this video instead. Uh, so first of all is the create pie and it's just it's just three basic primitives that are most commonly used when I'm starting uh, any object. So I got the cube and a sphere and another feature of it is that when you create a primitive depending on what you have selected is the position that it will appearing, which is quite handy. Um, so there you go, that's quite simple. And then the next thing is the remesh pie. And what that does is it sets the voxel remesh to that value that you see here and remeshes at the same time. So if I do 0.6, you get that. And then 0.3, this more detailed and the smaller the value the more detailed the mesh will be. So next is the symmetry pie. So if we turn on origins, okay so the little dot in the middle is the origin and if we just change this on the, it's on the x-axis that then if we use the symmetry pie, then we can copy from negative x to plus x, and then we get, it mirrors it across. Uh, then uh, you can quickly just copy over what you have missing. But sometimes you'll have, sometimes you'll have an object like this. And if we do mass slice fill holes and remesh, then um, you might have an object like this. So the origin is sort of here, and you want to have you want to have it copied over. So, so you can do that easily, and you might want to do minus y to. You can create an asymmetrical shape. So with the mask pie, if we mask out this area here, and then smooth, you can see we get a really nice, a really nice gradient. So it stretches in a a smoother way, you know. So if we clear that mask and we do it again, and we use the normal mask, uh, smooth mask, you can see it just smooths it right, a fraction. So what this, what this mask does is it smooths it by ten times at once. You can quickly get a very smooth mask, and it's quite handy for when you say you're bending a limb or something like that. You can get some. You get a really nice bend going there. So now the miscellaneous pie. So it's just, I couldn't work out where to put these in separate pies, so I've just bundled them all together because uh, they're all they're all different. So, um, so first of all, center origin to geometry. So this is really handy. So if you go in edit mode and just move, move it away from the origin. So the origin's here and we want to center it and it's a really quick way of doing that so you could be you could be sculpting on an object and you just find that when you go into object mode and you're rotating it doesn't quite rotate in the center and you want it to um, you don't always want to do that you know if you've got if it's an arm or something then um, you may want you may want it to be in this sort of position. 
you know, then you can you can rotate along that axis. But yeah, if you want it, quite often I do want it central, so it's a very quick way of setting that. Applying scale. So if you're in object mode and you scale the object, if you scale it uniformly, it's not a problem. If we're going to sculpt mode, we don't get any warnings, it's just bigger. Now, you will run into issues at some point because if I scale now, if you notice when I'm scaling in sculpt mode by hitting S, it jumps. It sort of jumps. Whereas if the scale, so if we reset the scale and then we go back, we scale, you see how it scales directly from the size it was. I think it's because because it's scaled in object mode, it's not actually that scale in sculpt mode. You know, so when you try and scale, it jumps to this bigger scale because uh, it's confused. So it's always nice. I always think it's important to have it scaled to one. So I'll just show you there, brings it back to one. And you can press Control A to scale. It's just slightly quicker applying the scale there. Um, also, if you scale on an axis, so that may happen at some point uh, in object mode. I always try and remember to scale inside of sculpt mode, so I don't have these issues as much. But you'll notice when I entered, there's a warning that the object has a non-uniform scale. And you'll notice the cursor is skewed in this way. It's stretched out. So sculpt is going to be a little bit strange and it's not going to work just as as normal. So, um, in order to fix that, yeah, just apply the scale. And then we go back in and it's fine. Um, so that's applying scale and why you would want to. Um, so say we're back in object mode and now let's parent. So if we scale and as a make it into a bit of a, an arm shape um we get to get the pivot right a bit so that's a bit like an arm so selecting the object you want to be parented to something and then select the parent object and then you parent them together this becomes the parent, and the first one you selected was the child. So they're linked together. And you can use the angle bracket keys to go from the parent to the children. It's quite a handy shortcut I've found. And that's just set by default in Blender. And when you're selecting a child, you can then unpair it quickly as well. And I think if you press Control Alt, Alt P, Alt P, you can do those clearing, uh, clearing the parent. Now, if you parent the objects together like this, and then rotate, using the nor using just normal unparent, you'll notice that the position and the rotation jumps. So if we do Alt P, clear parent, it jumps back to where it was before it was parented. So when, when you're using it in the pies, it's using the keep transformation as well, because you quite often you want it to stay exactly where you, where you left it when you rotated the parent. So it's quite useful as well. Uh, recalculate outside. So let's just unparent that. Uh, if you have mirrored, so say you've mirrored an object over to the other side, uh, and so you've mirrored on the x-axis like this, and you've been sculpting, well, if you try to sculpt when it's been mirrored, you'll notice there's a non, it's a non-uniform scale. And if you've got the same issue as before we applied the scale, you know, before. So sculpting will be very strange now because we've got a negative scale so it'll be even stranger to sculpt on. So to fix that, 
we just need to apply the scale. However, once we do that, because it was a negative, the axis was set. Um, it means that the normals have become flipped. So it's just the way it's just the way that Blender works, and I think it I think it does make sense technically that it does that. However, it was frustrating at first for me to understand why it did this, um, but it, you just need to recalculate the outside in order to fix it. Uh, so next one is make single user, which is if we have Alt D. So linked, duplicated an object and say we've, we've mirrored it and we've been, it's handy to have a linked duplicate sometimes because then we can sculpt on the main object and it changes the duplicate as well. But there might come a time when you don't want it to, you don't want it to have the same, you don't want it to mirror this object anymore. You want it to be its own object. So then you can quickly make single user and it's no longer connected to that. So that's a handy function. Um, link object data. So say you, you separate the two and this one has diverged. It's very different. You changed it loads. It looks, it looks really nice. Say it's some shoulder armor and you want it to be the same on the other one. Uh, but the objects, they're not linked duplicates. You can make them link duplicates by you select the one you want to copy first and then select the main object that you want to copy from and then you can link object data and then it becomes a link duplicate so then once we sculpt again you can see that it copies you can see that it copies over that's handy as well um and right yeah that that's that's everything um so i hope you found this interesting and perhaps some of the functions you would find useful in your own sculpting workflow um so yeah thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one